What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today we're going to be talking about finding equivalent fractions with my favorite strategy, the pattern method. But first, let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Today I will be able to find equivalent fractions using the pattern method. We probably need to start with some math vocabulary first though. What are equivalent fractions? Equivalent fractions are uh, fractions that are equal but have a different denominator. And that handwriting's messy, but what can you do, right? So for instance, what, I, what we mean by that is if we split this area model into half, and I split this one into fourths, and I'm trying to make it equal groups because we know equal or fractions are equal parts of a whole. If I shade in one half of this, that is equivalent or it is the same, it is equal to two fourths. Okay, now the denominators are different, it looks different, but these fractions represent the same value. That's what an equivalent fraction is. Let's rewind back to what we did last lesson. Last lesson we talked about finding equivalent fractions using multiplication, right? We multiplied by one because we realized that anything times one was itself, the identity property of multiplication. So we started multiplying by a big one. And what we mean by that is a fraction that is equivalent to one. So how did I turn three into nine? I had to multiply by three, which means my big one has to be three over three because this fraction is equivalent to one whole. Now, when you multiply, right, you multiply across. So four times three would be 12. So three fourths is equivalent to nine twelfths. And we did that using multiplication. What we want to recognize today though, is that repeated addition is also multiplication. So instead of multiplying, we can actually find equivalent fractions using addition. Let's take a look at this and let's talk about doing one half and finding all of these equivalent fractions using multiplication. If I multiply by the big one two over two, my next equivalent fraction would be two fourths. If I multiply one half by three over three, my next fraction would be three sixths. If I multiply by the big one four over four, my next equivalent fraction for one half would be four eighths. If I multiply by the big one five over five, my next fraction would be five tenths. If I multiply one half by six over six, I'm gonna get six twelfths. If I multiply one half by seven sevenths, I would get seven fourteenths. And if I multiplied one half times the big one eight over eight, I would get eight sixteenths. So I just used multiplication to help me find a list of equivalent fractions. We know repeated addition is also multiplication. And that's what the pattern method is going to use. If I just write down one half here, okay, and I'm going to draw my line all the way out here. This is my fraction bar. I'm going to skip count by two. So two, four, draw a line, six, draw a line, eight, draw a line, 10, draw a line, 12, draw a line, 14, and then 16. I've just listed out all the denominators of my equivalent fractions that I can skip count, or up here I multiplied to get. Now, one is the numerator. So if I skip count by one, I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I just used addition instead of multiplication to come up with these same fractions. One half is equivalent to two fourths, which is equivalent to three six, four eighths, five tenths, six twelfths, seven fourteenths, and eight sixteenths. That's the pattern method. Instead of multiplying, we use repeated addition. So if I wanted to do this I do problem, I want to find the first eight equivalent fractions for two thirds. So I have two thirds and I'm going to color code this just so you can kind of see. I'm going to draw my fraction line all the way out here and I'm going to start with my denominator. So my denominator is three. So when I skip count by three, I'm going to do three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. And I actually need to keep going. So excuse a different color. 24. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight denominators that I can make equivalent fractions with two thirds with. Now my numerator is two, so I'm going to skip count by whatever two is. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. So I've just made a list of eight equivalent fractions really quickly just by using addition. Two thirds is the same thing as four, six. Two th 4 6 is the same thing as 6 ninths, 8 12 10 15 12 18 14 over 21, and then 16 24 And if you notice, 
Again, repeated additions multiplication. 2 thirds times 2 over 2 was 4 6. 2 thirds times 3 over 3 was 6 ninths. 2 thirds times 8 over 8 was 16 24 I'm just making it simple in using addition. Okay, let's do four fifths together now. So I'm gonna do four fifths right here. And again, I just wanna make a list of eight equivalent fractions. So I just draw my line and the line doesn't really mean anything. It just helps me separate my equivalent fractions. It's kind of like the equal sign here, okay? Draw my line out. And it doesn't matter if you start with numerator or denominator. I just always start with my denominator. So my denominator is five. I'm going to skip count, use my addition and keep skip count by five. So that'd be 20. 25, 30, 35, and I need one more, so extend that out, 40. So I just have eight denominators down here now. Now I'm gonna skip count by my numerator, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, make that not look like a nine, there we go, 24, 28, and 32. So four fifths is equivalent to all of these fractions. This is a great strategy if you're not really sure about your basic facts yet. You can use the pattern method and repeated addition to do the same thing that we did when we multiplied by the big one. All right, here is the you try, okay? You're gonna pause the video and you're gonna write out the first eight equivalent fractions for one six using your pattern method. So hopefully you just paused it, you have your answer, you're checking your understanding now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down my one six. And I'm gonna say six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. I want to stop for a second because I just want to make sure one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make, and you may have made this, is they would say 6, 12, 24, 48 because they think they're adding the number before. Remember, we're multiplying by 6, which means we have to skip count by 6. So 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24. You have to make sure you skip count by whatever your first denominator is. And then you'd have 42 and your last one would be 48. Okay, that's your denominators. Now skip counting by one is pretty easy. One, two, three, four. Remember it's not one, two, four, eight. You're skip counting by whatever your numerator is. So that'd be five, six, seven, eight. And you have made a list of eight equivalent fractions for you to use. Hopefully that's just a really easy way for you to make a quick list of equivalent fractions. Maybe you're trying to find common denominators when you're adding fractions or you're trying to compare fractions, but that is a great strategy to use and it always works. Thank you so much for checking out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.